Hello everyone and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. In this lesson, number 149, we'll take a look at caching and how it relates to CAP theorem. Now you can find a listening to all of my lessons in Software Architecture Monday by going to my website, developer2architect.com slash lessons. Much of my material I do pull from uh, these two books I recently wrote uh, with my friend Neil Ford, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture, and also Software Architecture, The Hard Parts. Now, back in Lesson 111, I took a look at CAP Theorem and kind of explained, I illustrated how it works using the formal definitions of availability and consistency in kind of a system-wide view. But what I want to show you is something really interesting about CAP Theorem, how we generally face this every day. And I came across this kind of use case for CAP Theorem and realized, hey, this is a great example of CAP Theorem. And just to really illustrate how it appears so much in the decision making we have to do. And as a matter of fact, for that, I'm going to leverage caching. Now, I'm going to show you both in-memory replicated caching and also distributed caching. So you can go to Lesson 78 to look at replicated caching, and then Lesson 77, where I talk about distributed caching. Now, if you haven't seen any of these lessons, you can still watch this video. Uh, but I would recommend actually going and looking at really the formal kind of CAP theorem and then how each of these two topologies work, because I'm going to actually show them in this particular video. So let's talk about caching and CAP theorem. So here I've got a situation where we've got a catalog service right here. And that, of course, maintains all of our product catalogs. And I've got three instances, notice, of a shipping service uh, used to kind of calculate shipping costs and manage all of the shipping of our items to their customers. Now, I've got the CAP theorem triangle that I used in Lesson 111 over on the right-hand side here. And I'm going to be using that to kind of illustrate how CAP theorem works with caching. So let's start with that first topology, the in-memory replicated caching I spoke about and showed and illustrated in Lesson 78. And so what I'm going to do is use Apache Ignite. And this is an in-memory data grid. Uh, that means within each instance of my service, uh, that cache, in this case Ignite, actually runs within that process. And the data is stored in my process itself. And these all communicate to one another, uh, kind of forming, well, not kind of, but forming a data grid uh, where all the data is kept in sync between all of these instances of that cache. Now, as explained in Lesson 111, uh, because this is a distributed architecture, oh, we have to have partition tolerance. Uh, so the P part of CAP is kind of a given. That leaves us with consistency or availability. Well, it turns out here, I've got really good levels of availability. You see, I've got three different shipping services all containing the in-memory data grid. If I happen to lose the middle instance, for example, I'm still fully operational and the user can retrieve all the data that shows and demonstrates good levels of availability. So let's get that shipping service back up here. And on the triangle on the right hand side here, I'm going to mark availability as good. But the problem is the cache, in this case, in in-memory data grids, is always eventually consistent. So let's say that we are consistent. Everybody has this, this, this data right here. But notice on the catalog service, right over here in the bottom right-hand corner, I am going to do this. I'm going to change A to B. So I have just updated some sort of information on a particular product. Well, at this exact point in time, this data is not consistent. And as a matter of fact, as Ignite starts replicating this data to make sure everything becomes consistent, at this exact point in time right here, I could query the first instance of the shipping service, and I'm getting a different product information than I am in the middle instance. And so what this demonstrates is, let's go to our triangle, we don't have consistency. And this is what CAP theorem is all about. Between consistency and availability, kind of pick one. So now we start to see the trade-offs of in-memory replicated caching. But let's go to another 
kind of caching topology, that one that I talked about in Lesson 77, and that is to use distributed caching. Now I'm going to use a simple Redis cache here, and same services, but right now the catalog service does puts to all of its catalog information, and all three instances of the shipping service can now query that cache. Well, if we take a look, and let's go over to the right-hand side over here, where we've got our cap theorem triangle. Well, isn't it interesting? Again, it's a distributed architecture, so I have to support uh, partition tolerance, network partitioning, that P part, which leaves me again with consistency or availability. Well, here, I've got great levels of consistency because the data is only in one place, not spread throughout all the instances in the form of a grid. So here's product, I've got an A, I can change some of the product information, and regardless of what instance I go to, I'm getting the same information. So we go over to our triangle on the right-hand side, right below where my picture is. <laughs> I'll look down at it. <laughs> and let's mark consistency as a thumbs up. Yes, we are consistent with that data. We'll always be retrieving the same data. However, the cache may not always be available. So while I solve the consistency problem, now let's go over to our triangle here. Notice I don't have availability. Hmm. Well, that's kind of a problem. But let's stick with distributed caching and play a little game. Because one of the responses always to availability problems is to have multiple nodes, a, clusters, a cluster of nodes or instances. Now, this is in the form of either mirroring or uh, replicated instances of that Redis cache. And so now in this cluster, which is now load balanced, all the communication between these nodes happens internally within each of those Redis instances. Now, I've got the network partitioning still, so I've got that partition tolerance piece. Um, but now, I've solved the availability problem. Because you see, I could lose one of those nodes, but I'm still available. So let's go over to our little triangle right below me here <laughs> and mark availability. Ah, we've solved availability, but the problem is the cache is no longer consistent, but rather eventually consistent. You see, let's say everything's in line, everything's fine, but then we make an update to one of the catalog items. I'm going to put that in the middle instance. Notice at this point in time now, our data is inconsistent. As a matter of fact, as it starts replicating between those or even mirroring those, now I'm still in an inconsistent state. So if we look down below me where my picture is down at the triangle, we notice now I no longer have consistency. Boy, isn't it frustrating in our industry how you solve one problem and you keep introducing others. <laughs> but this does demonstrate a very interesting aspect of CAP theorem, that it is real. And these are the two choices we have to make. So I kind of want to summarize and kind of show you as a kind of a takeaway piece here. In memory, replicated caching gives us availability, but not consistency. Whereas changing the type of caching topology we use, that would be distributed, this in fact gives us that consistency, but no longer gives us the availability. So these are two core differences between these type of caching topologies, and CAP theorem is definitely in action here. It's one of the things we kind of forget about and don't consider when we look at the trade-offs between these two. But kind of focusing on distributed or client server caching, we notice that here with a single, single node, I keep getting that consistency. But the problem is when I try to replicate or mirror that node, I exactly flip this around. And a lot of times we don't realize we're actually doing this because we're solving one problem, but we forget about the data consistency piece. And now we have to ask which one of these two is more important because as I've demonstrated in now two different lessons, you can't have both availability and avail availability and consistency when we have network partitioning. All right, so 
just demonstrating that CAP theorem is alive and well. <laughs> but this has been Lesson 149, uh, kind of examples of using caching and seeing CAP theorem in action. Uh, yet another example of CAP theorem. Anyway, stay tuned in two more Mondays for another lesson in Software Architecture Monday.